Thank you, Jesus. Greetings, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. All right, everybody, we're going to get started here. I want to say good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Thank God for you. Happy Friday the 13th. Woo, we are thanking God so much this morning for bringing us through another week. And we thank God for what he's doing. We're going to go ahead and get started because we really are running behind. But I want to say a universal good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every single one of you. Happy Friday the 13th. And we thank God so much for uh, you being with us this morning. Let's welcome those who are new. Uh, we want to welcome you to the 5 a.m. Prophetic Prayer Power Surge, where every single morning we're here and it does go down. And what we mean by it goes down, we mean every evil altar of the enemy is coming down. And, you know, we thank God so much for leading you to this altar. And look here, I know it's Friday the 13th, but we're not looking for Jason Voorhees. We're looking for Jesus, okay? I want you to serve notice on every demon. We're not looking for Jason. We're looking for Jesus, okay? And we thank God so much for you being here. And we want to know how we can pray with you, how we can agree with you in prayer. Um, and if you're new, you can uh, definitely type your prayer request in the comment section in the chat and we will agree with you in prayer and we thank God for you. We know some things are too personal. You may not be able to uh, type everything in the comment section and that's OK. Um, but whatever you show up to this altar, whatever the request is, we want you to know we're agreeing with you. OK, so we thank God for you. Every request is covered by the blood of Jesus. And I want to thank God for my prayer partners and my battle buddies, these spiritual snipers, these spiritual sharpshooters who show up at this altar whenever they can, you know, uh, selfishly sacrificing their time, their sheets, their comforters to come and agree with you in prayer. And they are sowing prayers uh, in the lives of individuals. We may never know the impact of our prayers, but I thank God for you. And what the Bible says, whatsoever you sow, that and that only are you going to reap. So I know that God is going to clear your prayer list. Okay. So we're going to, we want you to know if you're new, please make sure you're following us on the platforms um, on Facebook. It's the real prophetess, April D Sears. And here on YouTube, uh, make sure you have subscribed to the YouTube channel, Prophetess April D. Sears. That way, when we go live, you will be notified and you can join us for the live services. We know the replay is good, but I like being in that live service. I like being under that fresh anointing that God releases upon us every single morning. And it, it really is a, a daily download that God get, gives us every single day. Um, I do want to go ahead and uh, call out Holly Brown's name. Holly Brown, I saw your request and uh, just want you to know that we are agreeing with you. Welcome to you, Jeff Martin. Uh, welcome, Audie, uh, and everybody here. We're not going to call names because we're, we're not going to be able to, to get through the service. But I just want you to know that we love you over here. And we thank God for each and every one of you, okay? Um, I'm telling you, these prayer partners... Um, these spiritual snipers, they, they are armed and dangerous. They are locked and loaded, and we are ready to declare war on every enemy this morning. We want to continue to keep praying for Israel. We want to pray for those who are in bereavement, those who have uh, had loved ones to transition. Uh, we want you to know that we're you're in our prayers, and we're believing that the comfort of the Lord will be sent to you and your family. Those of you in need of, um, oh, Oh, hallelujah. Let us pray for, uh, agree with Tracy Footman. Um, her, her God dad was found dead in his home yesterday. So we want to send the comfort of the Lord to you, Tracy and your family and all the bereaving families. And this is why I, I thank God for this altar. Um, because there's nothing but unity, nothing but agreement over here. And I believe that is why God is manifesting himself in mighty ways. And we, we reverence God. We honor him for what he is doing. Let us keep our children covered 
with prayer and we are thanking God for the divine order of protection that he has around each and every one of our children, our grandchildren, and all who are connected to us. We're believing God for your financial breakthrough. Those of you who are in need of a financial breakthrough, some of you are in need of transportation. Some of you are in need of housing. Um, some of you just, just need peace. And um, I, I know that God is hearing you. I know God is hearing every request. So we won't, don't want you to be weary and well-doing, but keep on praying, keep on believing God because heaven is not only listening, but heaven is responding. And they are sending their condolences to you and your family, uh, Tracy Footman over here on YouTube as well. So we thank God for you. All right, let's get started this morning. Today is 1013 and it happens to be on a Friday. <laughs> but as I mentioned earlier, we ain't looking for Jason. We're looking for Jesus. Okay, so we thank God for you. And today our prayer topic is going to be uh, taken from the uh, book of First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Um, the, the temptation won't overtake me. The temptation won't overtake me. So that's what we're going to uh, pray from today. And we thank God so much. So let us, let us go ahead and open up with prayer. And uh, I want to just give a shout of thanks to you, Pamela Mitchell, for what you sold into uh, Cash App. Thank you so much for what you do. And those of you who are the members on uh, the subscribers on Facebook, we thank God so much for you. And we also thank God for those members here on YouTube. Thank God for everything that you do. We give God praise for you. Let us pray. Father, we want to honor you this morning. We thank you for how you have brought us to the end of another work week. And thank you for continuing to keep us from danger seen and things that we don't even see that you do not allow to come nigh us. The word says a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. And we thank you, Lord, that it's not going to come nigh us. It's not going to come nigh our children. It's not going to come nigh anyone who is connected to us. And we give you praise because we know the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear you. And we fear you, Lord. We reverence you. We honor you. We thank you this morning. And we know that we are under an open heaven. We're under that spout where the anointing is coming out. We're under that spout where the healing and deliverance, salvation is coming out. And we are thanking you this morning. Father, we want to pray for every request at this altar, whether it's been typed in this morning or whenever any previous requests that have been uh typed in this chat or even brought to this altar. We are thanking you this morning for not only hearing our prayers, but answering our prayers. If there's a people that will pray, I truly believe that the God of heaven will answer. And we thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers, our cries, our supplications, our petitions this morning. And we give you praise for that, Lord. We want to say, Lord, have your way this morning have your way. We thank you that the strong man is bound. Every satanic assignment and demonic agenda is canceled and null and void. And we thank you this morning for what you're going to do, Lord. You be glorified. The devil be terrified is our prayer this morning. We will be so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for the fresh oil that you're pouring on us this morning, that fresh anointing that's being released on us. That anointing is, de is destroying yokes and it is removing burdens. Father, we're sending the word of the Lord to Tevin, uh, who's still in the hospital this morning. Father, we thank you that even though we're not able to go into that hospital, you're, we're sending your word. You said you sent your word and your word healed them and delivered them from destruction. And we give you praise right now that your word is healing Tevin and your word is delivering him from destruction. And we praise you, Lord God, for your divine deliverance, your divine salvation. And we honor you, Lord God, for what you're doing. Have your way. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, again, we want to say good morning to all of you. And we give God praise for what he is doing. Yes, we want to, um, uh, we bless, um, God, yes, bless Imani and baby, 
Um, yes, Father God, we pray that God touch uh, this request here that uh, Felicia has on YouTube for Imani and baby. And uh, we believe the report of the Lord. We believe in God's healing virtue to flow. And yes, lift and encourage this mom's heart in Jesus name. So let's agree with this request here for um, Imani and baby. Um, we're sending the word of the Lord uh, to those individuals this morning and everyone that has a request. We thank God so much for you. All right, let's move everyone because um, we really have to move today. I just want to say this. Uh, yesterday's service, those of you who may be uh, joining us and you uh, missed yesterday's live, you got to go back and listen to it. You got to go back and listen to it. It was, I listened to it about three or four times and I'm like, Lord, nobody but God, nobody but God. And this is what God is looking for in this season, you all, regardless of what we've been taught. You know, some of us have been doctrinized. What God is looking for in this season is and are available, available vessels. Look here, it ain't even got nothing to do with what you've done in the past. Look, get past the past. You repent of that thing. God is not holding you hostage to it. I've made many, many, many mistakes in my life. There's nothing I can do. Nothing I can do. I can't go back and change what I've done but I can change my future. I can change where I'm going. Come on. So God is, is wanting you to, um, you know, forgive yourself, forgive yourself and move on. So you can experience this abundant life that we've been talking about, uh, these last several days. So I thank God for the word. Amen. So we bind the spirits of guilt and shame, condemnation. Look here, God is not going to have you to be ashamed. It's time to move forward, move forward in your purpose. We often say at this altar, we are purpose pushers and we want to help to push individuals who feel embarrassed and shame, who feel insignificant, who feel like they can't be used by God. That's a lie from the pit. Come on. That's a lie from a, the pit. Let me tell you something. If Ray have made it and those of you who read your Bible in the book of Joshua. Rahab was the prostitute. She was a harlot. But look here, God did not hold her past over her head. When those spies came in to spy out that land, Rahab had more faith than them folk that, that was in her, in her nation. She said, look here, I know God going to give y'all the land. Matter of fact, we're afraid of y'all. We're terrified of y'all. And we know that the God, that the God, your God is going to give y'all this land. But when he gives y'all this land, don't forget about me and my family. Look here, the harlot, ah! the one who was probably in the category of the one least likely to succeed is the one that saved her whole house. Come on. So I know if Rahab can make it a prostitute, a harlot, one that worked the streets, Look here, you're going to make it too. You're going to make it too. And as a matter of fact, for Jesus to and God to really show out, he placed Rahab in his genealogy. Yeah, Jesus has a, a prostitute ha, ta, in his genealogy. Come on here, somebody. My God, Jesus has, Jesus has a prostitute in his genealogy. Oh, come on. So I want you to... I want you to let it go. I want you to drop the charges that you held uh, against your own self and, and with guilt and shame. Come on. No, no, no. It's time to, to move on and walk into what God has for you. Your best days and your blessed days are ahead of you. You, you, you Come on now. Your best days and your blessed days are ahead of you. Thank you, Jesus. That's why you got to keep walking by faith. You got to keep moving. You got to keep progressing. Amen. In and pressing into the things of God. All right. So this morning, the temptation won't overtake me. The temptation won't overtake you. And I want to go ahead and read this passage 
quickly out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to read this in a couple of different translations this morning. We're going to break a couple of words down for you. And we're going to believe God to have his way. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 in the King James Version, it says this. It says, there hath no temptation taken or overtaken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. This is why the temptation is not going to overtake you or take you over because God is faithful. Hallelujah. Paul says God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that, that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way, come on, make a way to escape. God has already made a way for you to escape. No trial, no temptation, come on, no barrier, no blockage can stop you. God has already made a way for you to escape out of it, for you to break out of it, for you to come through it. My God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. He says he will also, he says with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Oh, glory to God, that you may be able to endure it. Come on, God is building endurance in you. God is building stickability in you. Look here, you're going to outlive and outlast anything the enemy is trying to barricade and block you from or with. Hallelujah. Any kind of restriction, you're going to outlive it. You're going to outlast it. My God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Before I get too excited, I want to read this same passage out of the Amplified Bible this morning. Come on, I thank God already for the word. First Corinthians chapter uh, 10 and verse 13 in the Amplified Bible. I wanna get it. it, it reads like this. It says, for no temptation, no, I want you to hear me. No, no, not one weapon that the enemy has formed against you, not even one is going to prosper. He says, for no temptation, no trial regarding as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is no temptation or trial. Trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience. Oh, and such as man can bear, but God is faithful. His word and his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted. Did you hear me? God can be trusted. Look here, man may not be able to be trusted, but God is faithful and God can be trusted. Even when you can't track God, my God, even when you can't trace God, you can trust God, my God, but his, because his track record says he's never failed. His track record says he's never lied. His track record says he's never lost a battle. You can trust God when you can't trace God, when you can't track God. Hallelujah. The Amplified goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, yes, God, he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. God said, what kind of God would I be? 
amen, to put you in a situation that I know would break you down, take you down, knock you down. What kind of God would I be to put you in a situation that's going to take you out of here? God wants you to know I am not that kind of God. My God, if it shows up in your life, just know you're going to come through it. My God, if God brings you to it, God is going to bring you through it. You better know this. Hallelujah. My God, I thank God right now because I trust him. If this thing has showed up at my address, look here. I know God is going to give me the strength to go through what I need to go through. Thank you, Jesus. I don't look at this thing that has shown up on my doorpost as a blockage. I don't look at it as something that is restricting me. Look here, I'm going right through this thing. You can't stop me. You can't block me. My God, I thank God because I trust him. I trust your word, God. You are faithful. Hallelujah. He says, oh God, he says he will not let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always, somebody say always, he will always also provide the way out. That means of escape to a landing place. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't you know you have a landing place? Hold on just a moment, moment Facebook. We about to lose Facebook, y'all. Hold on. We got to adjust something over here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, we about to lose Facebook. All right. We're going to try to keep y'all holding on here. Oh, thank you, Father. I love this. I love this. My God, God says you're going to escape to a landing place. <laughs> Glory to God. My God. And see, the enemy don't want you to, to get to that landing place. He wants you to believe that it that God is not going to do it. But no, I got a landing place. God is going to make sure that I land safely and secure. My God, because I'm trusting in his word. He says, escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up, bear up under it patiently. Ooh. Yes, I got to read this in the passion, y'all. Oh, God. You, yeah, that's right, Cassandra. You have a landing place. Come on, somebody. And that landing place is a place of abundance, a place of peace, that abundant life that Jesus died for you to have. Come on, my God. This is where Jesus wants you to land. He does not want you to land in the land of depression and oppression and poverty and anxiety. Uh-uh, worry. No, that ain't your landing place. Come on. Thank you, Father. When we read that same passage in the Passion Translation, it says this, and I don't want to lose Facebook because my device is cutting up over here, Facebook, but we're going to try to, we're going to try to get through this. He says this. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13 in the Passion, it says we all, somebody say all, we all experience times of testing. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how rich you think you are or how much you have in your 401k, how many businesses you have. My God, the Bible says here we all, we all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you because you belong to him. Now, folk that don't belong to God, the Bible don't say that God is going to be faithful to them. But because you belong to God, the, the writer here says that he's going to be faithful to you. Thank you, God, because you're trusting in him. He says, but God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity nature and timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity for you to trust him. Did you hear what I just said? 
This word, did you hear what this word said? It says each opportunity, each thing that you go through, each situation is an opportunity for you to trust God. It's an opportunity for you to know God in a way that you did not know him before the test. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you got something going on in your body, You've never been through something where you had to trust God for total restoration, trust God for healing. How would you be able to testify that he's a healer if you've never had your body healed, if you've never had your mind healed, if you've never had that situation healed? How could you testify with confidence and Godfidence to know that I know that he's a healer? My God, I don't have to ask nobody if he's a healer. I know for myself that he's a healer. If you've never been in a situation, my God, you didn't even have two pennies to rub together. You were broke, busted, and disgusted. I can relate to that. And God shows up, amen, and allows abundance to hit your life. I can sit here with confidence and confidence to let you know that his name is Jira. I've been homeless. I've had cars repossessed. I've had homes repossessed. I've had folk talking about me, preaching about me because I didn't even have $5 to put gas in my car. But look at me now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Kumo D say, how you like me now? Because I was able to go through something. Because I was able to go through it. My God, with the power of God, even though I couldn't track God, I couldn't pick God God up on my GPS, but I say, God, I don't see what you're doing. I don't understand what you're doing. It don't make no sense to my psyche, but even though I can't track you, I'm going to trust your word. You said in all things that I am to give thanks. I'm not thanking you for my car being repossessed. I'm not thanking you for my house being repossessed. I'm not thanking you that folk preaching on me in the church house, but I'm thanking you while I'm in it. Why? Because you won't cause me to catapult. You won't cause me to be thrust into a landing place of prosperity. I wish I had somebody to help me here. You need to know the temptation is not going to, amen, it's not going to overtake you. The temptation is not going to overtake you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. We got to trust God. We got to trust God in spite of it all. The word teaches us that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when you are trusting God, you've got to be full of faith too. You got to be faithful. You got to be full of faith knowing that God is going to do it for you and your family. Oh, Woo, hallelujah. I'm so glad I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> My God, you don't look like what you've been through. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm praising him right now. He, it goes on to say, yes, it says, and each test, I'm going to read that again. Each test, each one of them, y'all, that's why we got to pass the test. Come on. Hallelujah. You cannot have a testimony without the test. And if we don't pass the test, we're going to get a do over. We're going to have to retake the test. Look here. I never liked retaking tests when I was in school or college. My God. And you think I'm going to want to retest? No, I'm going to pass this test because God has put it in me. God has given me a way to escape that I'm able to pass the test. You can pass this test and you will pass this test. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, you will pass this test. I don't want to do a do-over. I don't want to go through this again. Come on, Jesus. He says each, each, oh yes, God, each test is an opportunity. It's like God is setting you up. It's like God has set you up. Hallelujah. My God. And see, when God sets you up, that place, that place that you're trusting God, that place that God has you at right now, that is a launching pad. 
That is a launching pad. Come on, somebody. That look here. The harder the test, the further the launch, the further the catapult. Oh, glory to God. Y'all need to hear me this morning. Y'all need to hear me this morning. The heart of the test, hallelujah, to whom much is giving, given, much is required. When you, when you, hallelujah, are in the center of God's plan, hallelujah, that's when you're going to have the most opposition. And some of you right now, you're dealing with some hard opposition. But God wants to encourage you this morning to let you know you are in the center of God's plan. You're right in the center of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And because you're having the opposition, my God, if I wasn't having no opposition, I would be a little nervous. But because you're having the opposition, God wants you to understand something. You are in the center of his plan. God is setting you up and he's going to thrust you. He's going to catapult you into something, my God, so amazing. Oh, hallelujah. That's why you can't stop. You can't quit. You can't give up. Oh, hallelujah. You cannot give up. Oh, you're too close. You're too close. He goes on to say, these, these, these tests are an opportunity to trust him more. For along with every trial, God has provided for you. I want you to, I want you to know he's talking to you. He has provided for you a way of escape. And look what the passion says, the latter part of this verse. He says, provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. Did you hear me? Thank you, Melinda Fowler for the stars. He's bringing you out victoriously. God is not going to let you go through any situation, any test, any trial, and you come out limping and broke and busted. Uh -uh. No, no. You're going to come out victoriously. The temptation won't overtake you. Look here, we're not going to be overtaken, but we're going to take over. We're not going to be conquered, but we're going to conquer. You're more than a, con he didn't say you're going to be conquered. Paul didn't say, look here, y'all, y'all going to be conquered. He said, you're more than a conqueror. You are to conquer, not be conquered. Okay. Not be conquered. And I'm going to stop right here because um, there's so much more. I don't know. I may have a little time to go further, but, um, I want to talk, this is going to have to be this. I don't know how we're going to do this, but there's more that we need to, to talk about. But I want to, when we go back to first Corinthians 10, 13, and I want to look at a few words out of this verse, um, that, that, uh, Paul uses here. And when he, when we look at the word, over, overtake, or it says taken in the King James Version, but another translation may say overtaken. That word overtaken, it's the Greek word lambano, lambano. It means, uh, it's spelled L-A-M-B-A-N-O, lambano. That's the, that's the Greek word for overtaken. And I do want to give us a couple of, um, uh, things here. Uh, if we have time, I, there's much more that I want to, uh, talk about, but I don't know if we're going to have time to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Lombano means I receive, get, it means to get, it means I take, or I lay hold of Lombano. Uh, that's what, that's what that Greek word for taken or overtaken um is in the greek and uh bear with me just a moment because there were some other words there's some other things i want to go into but i don't know if i'm going to have time to do it but um i do want to look at this word um here thank you jesus 
Oh, hallelujah. We give God praise for the word of God. Yes, Lombano. Um, this word, um, it comes from a root, L-A-B, which means to actively lay hold of or take or receive. Um, it emphasizes the volition of the receiver. So this temptation uh, is really trying to get you to submit to it that you be overtaken by it. No, but look here, there's no temptation taking you or overtaking you, but, but, but such as is common to man. Look here, everybody, I don't care if your name, if, if you're a celebrity or whatever, everybody is going to go through some kind of temptation, some kind of trial, some kind of situation. Amen. But as a child of God, you're going to, you're going to come through it. It's not going to take you down. It's not going to take you out. You are going to overcome it. It is not going to overcome you. Okay. And you got to have that kind of mindset. I'm going to overcome this thing. This thing is not going to overcome me. So I thank God and I give God praise. And some of the things James talks about it, and I don't know if we're going to have we're not going to have time to deal with James today, but a lot of these things that uh, uh, as it relates to the temptations are things that are going on inside of us. Inside of us, uh, when we look at temptations like that. So the, the reason why the enemy could have leverage on us it, a lot of times is because we are refusing to trust God and we're trusting in our own self. We're trusting in our own self. This is why when Satan, the serpent showed up in the garden of Eden, you know what he tempted Eve with? You're going to be like God. You're going to be like God. And that got her attention. There was something going on on the inside of Eve that got her attention. Look here. She was already like God. But what Satan, what the serpent presented to her is being like God without depending on God. And this is why folk get in trouble to try to do something in our own strength, not depending on God, refusing to depend on God. This gets us in trouble, y'all. Hallelujah. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. And that's what Satan said. You know what? This you go, look here. It's going to make you wise and you're going to be like God. Be like God without depending on God is what the serpent presented to her. Come on. And that will anytime we we look at any kind of test or trial or situation like that, we're going to be overtaken. We're going to be overtaken. So the, the attitude that Eve took on and that the enemy presented to her, it was an attitude that shut out God in your life, shut out God in her life. And that's, that's, that's not the attitude that we want to take on. I need God 24 seven. I need God. I can't look at, we can't breathe. We can't do anything without God. Hallelujah. And I thank God, but this enemy is a manipulator and he's very skillful. So this is why we got to trust God. Even when it, it looked like, it looked like God is not working in your favor. You Don't you know you are God's favorite and he is working in your favor. You attract favor. You are that favor magnet. Come on. This word temptation, I want to give you this and we're going to, we're going to have to stop here, but I want to give you what the Greek word for temptation is. It's the word paras, parasmas, parasmas, P-E-I-R-A-S-M-O-S. -S. I'm going to say it again slow. P-E-I-R-A-S-M-O-S. -S. That's the Greek word for temptation. 
that Paul uses in this scripture. So paras mos. And what that means is this. I want you to hear this. It means any outside source that appeals to a weakness in our flesh. Did you hear me? Any outside source that appeals to a weakness in our flesh. See, it's something going on on the inside of us that the enemy brings, amen, and, and is able to present this temptation. And then, you know, if we are, we've got that area of weakness. See, let me, let me, let me see if I can try to break it down. See, the enemy can't tempt me with beats, right? The enemy ain't going to come. The, and see, they're monitoring spirits that monitor us, that watch us, okay? They watch us. They see what we like, see what we do, see how we how we um, um, uh, operate. See, this is why the, in the book of Job, it said that the that um, that the Satan, the Satan was able to go before God and accuse or present something before God. See, these these enemies are able to see what we do. The enemy, the enemy ain't going to. And I'm putting this mildly. The enemy is not going to come in and tempt me with some beets, right? Oh, oh, you know, try to get me to, to, to eat beets. Why? Because I hate beets. I hate beets. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, I do like some sweet things. Now, if I'm on a fast, and, and, and this has happened to me several times when I've been fasting, and somebody in the office shows up and say, hey, I brought donuts for everyone. I brought donuts and coffee with everyone. That is a temptation because why? I like donuts and coffee, okay? I hope y'all, I'm trying to put it in a mild way so that you understand. So this is why we've got to uh, check our heart. Make sure that, 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 that our heart is not, make sure that the things that, 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 it's things that are that are not polluted and contaminated going on inside of our heart. Now I'm saying it mildly because I'm talking about food, but we can use it for sexual sin. You know, we can use it for different things. We can use it about, as it relates to drugs or sexual sin. Now you, you just say you you a single woman, right, or single man, you know, and you maybe you've been in a relationship with somebody, you know. The, the enemy can entice us in, in these areas. Look here. But there's some things going on on, in the, on the inside of us. And I'm trying to just hurry up and do this so we understand. But this word temptation, again, refers to any outside source that appeals to a weakness in, my, in our flesh. So the enemy is going to use something on the outside. Amen. Because... Of, uh, uh, and because we haven't got some things right on the inside of us. And when that connection happens and we fall for it, guess what? We've just, actually, let me just turn to James real quick. Hold yourself in, in first Corinthians. I want to go to James chapter one real quick to see if we can get an understanding of this. So James chapter one and I want to look at verse number 12. So what God is teaching us is that temptations don't have to overtake us. Temptations don't have to take, we don't have to fall for it. We can overcome any and every temptation. Yes, we can. God, well, he wouldn't have said it. In James chapter one, verse 12, look what it says. It says, blessed, blessed is the man that what? Endureth temptation. So God is teaching us, regardless of what uh, Michael Todd says, and regardless of what these, these uh, preachers say that are, that, are, that are not hearing from God, regardless of what Jamal Bryant said about smoking weed, you can overcome and endure any temptation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got silly folk preaching with millions of followers. 
millions of followers saying that we need another gospel. The devil and his grandmother are liars. You can endure it. Look here. The temptation won't overtake you. Come on. And this is how I live my life because God has said it in his word. Whose word am I going to believe? Jamal Bryant's or Mike Todd's or Brian Carnes? Or am I going to believe God's word? I'm believing. I'm sticking with God's word. Come on. He says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, did you hear me? When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. This demon is trying to tempt you and strip you of your crown. Did you hear me? He's trying to strip you. Oh, glory to God. He's trying to strip you of your crown. Because James says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When he is tried, like Paul told us, these trials, these tests, he says, when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised them that love him. Devil, you ain't gonna strip me of my crown. Come on, if I gotta beat this flesh, like Paul said, that scripture we had, beat this flesh, bruise this flesh, uh-uh, no. Babe, I'm going to overcome this temptation because God has given me the power to do it. It's not by my might. It's not by my power, but it's by his spirit. And then James goes on to say, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man. Verse 14 says this, but every man is tempted when, James? When is every man tempted? Every man is tempted, hello, here it is, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So Eve had a lust on the inside of her that the enemy, <coughs> excuse me, that the enemy <coughs> took advantage. So an opportunity to pounce, my God. And there was a conception made. There was something that happened. Oh God, I hope y'all following me. James says, these are things on the inside of us that draw us away. It's our own lust. Oh, come on. Our own desires. Look at here. I want, oh God, th this is, this is more than, this is more than, uh, we really can go through this morning, but I want you to get this. Let me, let me see. Um, oh God, hold on a minute. I want to, let me see if I can Okay, here it is. Um, hold in James and hold in 1 Corinthians 10 because this thing is good. But when I go back to Genesis chapter 3 and I read verse 6, it says this. It says, and when the woman saw, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Now, wait a minute. God done told y'all that you are not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why? Because of the mixture, right? We talked about that. God does not like mixture. You can't mix light with darkness because you get gray. And God does not like gray areas because that brings obscurity. That brings confusion. This is why God says don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because there's, you can't mix good and evil, okay? But the enemy works through obscurity and confusion. He is, and when, the, when she saw, now how do you see this tree as good when God has said it's not? So Eve was trying to be like God without God. Be like God without God. Hallelujah, come on. She saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes 
uh huh, to the eyes. We don't walk by our eyes or what, what we see in the natural. And it says, and a tree to be desired, desired. This is what James is talking about. Our desires need to be purified. If our desires are not purified, look at this is how the enemy can use the temptation to draw us away from God, draw us away from the word because of our own lust. She saw the tree, she saw, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Now, don't you know that she and Adam were already walking in the wisdom of God? How much more wise can you be? Adam named every one of these animals that we see today without a Harvard uh, degree, without a Stetson degree. Without a high, without an IQ, okay? Without a having to take any kind of standardized testing, okay? Adam and Eve walked in the wisdom of God. But see, because of the desire that's down here, that's down here, that's working to try to draw me away from God, to try to draw me away because of my own lust so the enemy can overtake me. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When she, when, when she, okay, let me, so that it was pleasant to the eyes and, and a tree desired, desired to make one wise. Look at here. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So Adam was in close proximity to Eve for her to eat and say, here, baby, eat some of this. And, and see, Adam did not even go to God and say, God, my I know what you told me. My wife is, he did not, see, he, 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 oh, glory. He cut God out of the equation. We have to, I don't care if it's my husband, my children, we have to acknowledge God in all. He, we do not find where Adam went to God. And when we read after they said, we, we read where God heard, uh, Adam heard God walking in the cool of the day. Come on. And uh, God, the first question in the Bible the first question in the Bible, where's God asking for Adam's location? Come on, what's your location? Come on, where are you? He says, where are, he says, where art thou? God does not ask questions to get information because he's omniscient. God never asks a question to get information because God is all knowing. But what happened was there had been a separation. I'm not able to locate you now, Adam. Something has happened and this thing has separated you from me. Oh God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I wanna see if I can, can get through. Oh, I don't even know if I can get through this. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, but James, I want to just read verse 15 because this is so powerful. This is very powerful. And see, we can blame, we can say, I'm only human. I'm, you know, the Bible, I'm only human. You know, anybody can say that and say, well, God, I forgive me. No, James says, blessed is the man that endureth the temptation. Where are those who are able to endure? Where are, I'm, I'm tired of seeing the jellybacks. I'm tired of seeing the wimps. Well, I do this because my mama and them did that and my, my dad. And I'm not saying that we don't go through situations. We do. But I'm so tired of hearing folk that have excuse after excuse after excuse of why we can't go through, why we can't break through, 
why we can't endure. Why? Because we've had preaching, preaching that has catered to being a jelly bat. Come on, somebody. The devil is a liar. We've had teachers who have diluted the word. Oh, well, God understand. No, what God understands is his word. And James tells us right here, James says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. If we couldn't endure it, James wouldn't have put it in there. Oh, God. And then in verse 15, it says this. Then when lust. Okay, here we, here, here. now here's the, the, something is in motion now. Something is moving now. And when lust or the desire hath conceived, that connection has been made. Look here, the connection has been made. It, it bringeth forth sin or it gives birth to sin. When we, when we fall into these temptations, when we submit, when we allow the enemy to present these things and, and we succumb to it, there's a, there's a conception. There's a conception. And what the enemy wants to happen is a birthing of something that's going to overtake you, overwhelm you. My God, did you hear me? He wants something to be birthed that's going to overtake you. Good God Almighty. That's going to keep you barricaded and limited and restricted. And you keep going through this vicious cycle over and oh, It's a recurring vicious cycle. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God, we didn't know a birthing was taking place. Yes, it bringeth forth or it gives birth to sin. And sin, look at here, look at the progression of this thing. Look at this. And the sin, look here, it's not done by just giving the birth to something. This thing is not done with giving birth. This thing wants to bring death. Oh, God. oh, come on. Yeah. Come on, somebody. My God, look at this. He says, um, it bringeth forth sin and the sin. Now here's sin. This, 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 this thing has been birthed. Sin. And sin, when it is finished or full grown, bringeth forth death. Come on. So you think this is a light thing? That the, the Jesus said the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you thought it was, you thought it was, well, we all human. We all human. Well, th no, this demon is really trying to kill you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We sleeping around, drugging around, doing all kind of stuff, and we think we getting by. The devil say, uh-uh, baby, you birthing something. You birth is something. Keep on, keep on falling into my trap. Keep on doing what I want you to do. You giving birth to something and you don't even know what you giving birth to. Oh God, I got to get out of here. Hallelujah. Father God, there's so much more. But the passions of sin, those sinful desires that we have Amen. On the inside of us. Come on. These are things that the enemy uses to draw us away from God. And there's a trap. There's a trap. It's a, it's a trap that he's trying to lure us to. But God wants you to know this morning. The temptation don't have to overtake you. You can, you can destroy any temptation because God has given you the power to do it. Oh, hallelujah. I got to give you this. I'm going to get in trouble. I got to go. You know what? I'm going to leave that for tomorrow. I got to go. Father God, we thank you right now and we praise you for the word. We honor you and we magnify you for this word, Lord God. And Father, I thank you right now for strengthening every one of us at this altar, everyone connected to us at this altar, 
that we need to know how strong we are. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And that means to beat any temptation. Hallelujah as well. So Father God, we pray that you bless everyone at this altar. And I thank you so much for what you're doing in their life. We pray you continue to give us the strength, amen, to endure temptation. We don't have to succumb to it. We don't have to give in to it, but you gave us the power, amen, and the authority to endure it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you right now for releasing your strength. Hallelujah. Amen. To each and every one of us in Jesus name. And I thank you for anointing each and every one of us at this altar. And we thank you that that anointing has destroyed and that anointing has broken, has destroyed every yoke and removed every burden in the name of Jesus. And we honor you, Lord God, for your word this morning. Father, you are faithful. We read the word where you are faithful. You are consistent. And we thank you so much. Have your way. Have your way in our lives. In Jesus name. And I pray God as we depart from this altar. We never depart from your presence. We pray that you would be with us. And that you would keep us throughout this day. Thank you for putting your super on our natural today. And we pray that you would order our steps in your word. And we give you praise for every, every precious individual at this altar. And those who are going to catch the replay. Their children their grandchildren. Thank you for meeting every need. We are praying for Barbara Drakeford's mother. We're praying for that situation. God, nothing is too hard for you. And we thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for having our best interest at heart. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right, everybody. God bless you. God keep you. And I'm going to see if we're going to uh, continue with this because I still had um, more things I wanted to go over, but we'll just see what God says. All right. All right. Love you all. Um, I pray that you have a Jesus filled day and we thank God and we'll see you the next time. All right. God bless you. YouTube. You got work to do over here. There's 51 of you over here on YouTube. Only 33 have hit that, uh, thumbs up. Go ahead and do that on your way out so that, uh, we can throw this algorithm off and push the broadcast out to many others because somebody needs to know that the temptation is not going to overtake them. Okay. Amen. And I thank God for the word of the Lord. God is bringing us to a place of maturity. It's the mature believer, the mature believer. I'm telling you, uh, oh, God is doing some great things and thank you for growing us up. We are growing in grace, y'all. We are grow whether you know it or not, we are growing in grace. And I love it. I love that God is allowing us to grow up together. It's so amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, everybody. Love you. God bless you. And God keep you. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you.